Ok. Come here then. Come here then. Uh. Ok. So. That's So, Sigma Photo Pro, um, this video is in three parts. Part one is just setting context and background and stuff. Part two will be a walkthrough of an example image through what I do in Sigma Photo Pro and then into Darktable. Part three will be some examples of other images that have already been processed, specifically kind of focusing more on the color modes from Sigma Photo Pro, which I don't use a great deal, but which can be useful. Apologies for the poor sound quality. Um, I had to um, put the lav mic aside for a while because the dog's too interested in it while I'm um, videoing. Basics and context, just to say that this is, I process all of my Sigma raw images, my X3F images in the same way. I take them all into Sigma Photo Pro first, create a TIFF, um, and then take that into Darktable. The version of Sigma Photo Pro I'm using is 6.8.5, and the version of Darktable that I'm using is 3.8.1. Um, as I say, I process all my Sigma raw images in the same way, pretty much. Um, so that includes images from my SD Quattro, DP1 Merrill and DP3 Merrill. And I always shoot RAW and use the very base ISO, which is usually 100, I think. Um, so without further ado, let's jump into a quick walkthrough. So looking at an image in Sigma Photo Pro, most of the work I do will be around these tonal adjustment sliders. And what I would tend to do on an image like this, where we've got quite a lot of, um, we've got some shadow areas and some quite high lit areas, I would tend to bring the exposure down and bring the fill light up a little, just so that we get kind of a closing of that tonal range that we've got brought the highlights down a bit and brought the shadows up a bit. I might also bring the contrast down a fraction and that's probably on an image like this as, as much as I would do. One thing that is worthy of uh, mention and is sometimes worth exploration on a, an image by image basis. You've got these color modes and um, whilst we're in standard here because we've got some greenery I might also just take a look at the landscape. Turns out I don't like that as much. Um, I think forest green will turn those greens a bit too green for my liking. That's a bit too vibrant. So I'm going to go back to standard there on that color mode preset and leave it at that. Um, usually that's as much as I would do in Sigma Photo Pro. If I've got some real kind of um, chromatic aberration problems, I might look at the fringe correction um, piece. But otherwise, what you've seen there is generally what I would limit my adjustments to. Um, what I would then do is create a, a half size 16 bit TIFF. And what I would then do is close this and pick that up in dark table. So picking this image up in dark table, I've got my kind of um, my standard template of tools that I use in, in dark table. And having been through Sigma Photo Pro, what I will tend to do is limit it to things like, um, I may use the haze removal. 
I may not. And most of these things I'll click on and off just to see what I think. I actually quite like that. Shadows and highlights, maybe, but we're beginning to look a little bit forced now. Local contrast. And for some of these things, you know, I'll click them on and off a few times just to see what I particularly like. Filmic RGB is really, yeah, that's gives it a very contrasty look. That can be particularly nice when you're working with monochrome. Um, Velvia, probably a bit too green. I think that's, that's, I quite like that as it is. I'm happy with that now. And it, it's here in, um, I would do other things if I wanted to, things like cropping, for example, I would do here in dark table, just because I find the tools easy to use. That's where I'd stop for this image at that point. Sometimes I will just have a look, see what they look like in monochrome. Yeah, see that's quite a contrasty look, I quite like that. So I may actually create two versions of this. I may create a um, colour JPEG output and then also a monochrome version. Switching back momentarily to Sigma Photo Pro, something that um, whilst mentioning those various um, sliders, if we take a look at this particular image, which I've already done some manipulation of, there it is, already done some manipulation of this image, but also I notice that there's a a teal and orange version of this that I created. And sometimes, you know, that, that kind of that sky like that is, is something that I particularly like. So I sometimes experiment with this one as well in the color modes. And having now had a, a quick whiz through that, let's um, look at some of the images using things like the teal and orange color mode, the um, classic blue fov classic blue and the i think i've got some of the forest green here as well plus one or two images that have converted to monochrome um just to show um yeah some of the examples i guess from this uh, editing regime Any questions or further insights required or whatever, then please just um, yeah, leave a comment and I will do my best to um, answer.